Man, I'm 34 right now. Ah, oh, should I say I'm 34? Fuck it, I'm 34. Hey, I'm 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 Does hyped really about matter? 35 though. I'm hyped about uh. I mean, you have no choice. Like when people be like, oh, "I don't want to get older." Kill yourself. Yeah, like, so done, I mean, man. there's nothing you can there's do. There's nothing. About it. I enjoyed my 20s. They were great. Facts. Now, being in the 30s, it's, it's growth. It's, it's, yeah, it's growth. Yeah. The stuff you do in your 20s is not it. You no. Know, <laughs> you thought it was. Yeah, yeah. It's at the time, it. you thought it was. It's, at the time, For you sure. thought it was. You didn't have money. You 20s. didn't have money. 20s is broke. And then you try to, <laughs> you didn't have broke. money, but you tried to act like you had money. You tried to be cool. Yeah. And now it's like, I was talking to somebody yesterday, and I was like, I have no aspirations on on being cool. Like, I have cool things, but I don't obsess over them. Like, I'll be like, I got a bunch of Jordans, but not all of them are retro. When I meet yeah. people and they be like, your friend was like, ah, oh, they're not retro. I was like, Just don't motherfucker, care. I like the way they look. They could, I could get them at the outlet. I like Jordan ones. I feel like once you hit 40, and I'm super close to that, uh, that's what I want to get, that old man, like, I just don't care. Well, like you'll see like a 40 year old dude just chilling yeah. like, oh, I don't care. Well, I, to be honest, <laughs> I don't I, care about none of that. We're, we're brothers and I've known you my whole entire life. Oh, no, no. I've been developing no, no, the no, 40 de- swag developing. since 20. You've, 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 you've <laughs> had 20. it. You've no, had no, 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 no. I haven't gone, I haven't gone full out though. There's got to be more like not caring. Like, that I jacket. Mean, Oh yeah, man. them shorts right there. Yeah, man, just, just rock the shorts. Them shoes, <laughs> like, hey, what's wrong with the shoes? There's man? nothing wrong with them. The shoes was cheap. There's you know, nothing. You no, know what, I'm talking about now are, forty. I'm not talking no, about no, no, dad no. forty. You know when? But the you know shoes what we're doing? Are good Hold when on. you when you when you start talking about the price. Where you'd be like, what's wrong with the shoes? These was thirty dollars. Mm, yeah, they that's cheap. when you know you're like, yeah. oh, all right, all right. Well, we're yeah. talking too much. Black and ugly as ever, ever. I stay Houston down to my mother loving socks. Mother, mother loving socks. Yeah, I remixed it. Yeah, I felt good did. about that. <laughs> but anyway, we're back again with another In My Humble Opinion podcast. I'm here today. Avery, like a very nice guy. I'm not even going to point at it because I suck at it. Back, back with the co-host, Just Devon. Just Devon. Just and Devon. <laughs> we got a special guest. You've heard his voice. The bearded brother over here. Hey. Tony. 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 Dark. Yo. Is that right? Tony Dark Music. Yeah, that is. Right, Tony right. Dark Music. Tony Dark Music. Bang, bang. There we go. All right, Easy. Well, y'all know the premise of our show. We pretty much do the same thing every episode. We do. Just talk about Houston. Talk yeah. about artists. Talk about going back. So, Tony. Yo. Tony Dark Music. What gets you into music, man? Um, My father, actually. Mm. Um, my father was growing up. He was in a band with his uh, twin brother. And, um, and yeah, he... he sung throughout church my whole life and uh really just got me into guitar early i played guitar when or i started playing guitar when i was 13. you still play um yeah a little bit okay so you can still break it out like yeah you have a guitar in the back. right here no, no, bro, bro, I'm just bro, bro. <laughs> so you you still stay a lot both of us used to play piano like cool. really well at one point, I still play piano. And then oh. we stop. You lying? <laughs> <laughs> you are lying. Like, I play the. I play. I play that keyboard. <laughs> do 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 <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> Yes, we uh, no, Beverly, Beverly no, Hills not, Cop. No, that wasn't Beverly Hills Pop. That was a whatever. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. But still okay. okay. So your dad uh, with the twin brother. Did you ever get your dad and your twin brother confused? No, his twin brother. No, never, no, no, no. Never, never. They did. never played that trick on you. Nah. Ah, oh, that would have been a great. They, one. they, they were twins, but they weren't like identical. Oh, oh okay. Fraternal. Well, they were. Well, they were identical, I guess. But I could tell the difference. Okay. I feel you. Okay. We know twins. I mean, like yeah, that. I could. Yeah, so I don't know. The, you're it's playing. You're playing guitar. <laughs> yeah. You're, 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 you're. This is playing guitar at the church. No, no, no. I was um. More, just, trying to start a band. Oh, okay. Like, okay. Yeah. How old were you? Thirteen. Thirteen. When so I started okay. yeah. trying to get girls. Yeah. yeah. That's, facts. That's, how, that's how you do it. You got to start a band. Who influenced you to start this band? Um. What was the moment where you're like, I need to start a band? Man, to be honest, I don't even know. Uh, I mean, back then I was listening to like a lot of Metallica. Yeah, of course. And and stuff like that. So I I, I just loved it. So what, I what year know. was this? Um, 
<laughs> I'm okay. horrible at math. Maybe yeah. 98 ish. 98 right. ish. Okay. Because so I would have been R. 10 e. in. I would have been Metallica. 10 in 95. So yeah. yeah. 98 ish. REM, Metallica, Manson. Yeah. Uh, what else was that? That's a good time for rock yeah, music. Yeah, that was a yeah, good was. time for it rock music. Solid. It was a really good time for rock music. Yeah. That's also when the rock. Foo Fighters. Started. Yeah, Foo Fighters. Yeah. Most Man, definitely. love Foo Fighters. Yeah. Fast. That was in that brief period of time when the rock was really like, we're going to cross it over with the rap your Lincoln Park <laughs> Jay Z yeah. all that other kind of yeah I mean people were doing it yeah I was about to say I yeah, like Fred it. Durst it but, was Limp like, Bizkit and uh Corn yes Corn that's did what a I was lot of say. it Corn yeah. Corn was Slipknot nice. was soon yeah. to really Corn drop a, Corn was nice low Corn key. is on concert mm -hmm. now Corn yeah. is nice like I don't even know was, they lost uh, yeah, I don't few. they I don't did. know about now I don't know what lost them they lost their bass player he went to yeah that's right I don't God I don't know if uh yeah i don't know what it was but yeah corn was like really it, i really felt like corn wasn't they got like oh we're doing rap rock but i was like i just thought y'all was doing rock yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was it's really dope. It. yeah i liked corn a lot like fred yeah. durst was rapping once he got with Method Man, I was like, "Oh, you're a rap. Oh, oh you I rap forgot about that <laughs> oh, you song. A you, you're a that rapper. Song, I yeah. like that song. I did. I did I like, like that. that song. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you were 13 at the time, or so. This is like 1998. Yep. So you decide you're playing the guitar. You're gonna start this middle band. school. Yeah. Yep. And so we, I, you know, got a couple guys together and we were rocking it for a little bit and. You know, I could never keep a solid core of guys together, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it was just like, it was about the passion, of course, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and if nobody, if y'all aren't on the same page, it's super hard for a band to, to obviously do anything. Yeah. <laughs> so, any um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, man, I, I always grew up listening to hip hop. I got an older brother. Um, so that's kind of how I, I transitioned into hip hop because um i always loved it and and after i could never keep a solid band together i was like i guess i'm gonna start rapping now because i wanted to rap oh, like okay. i always okay and i always sung too like i was always you were you know not always but one of the singers in the group yeah. or you said i mean so i don't know it was just okay it yeah, made for it it, 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 it went it went into a transition and and then, um, yeah, so that we, I had a couple, and this was, you know, high school-ish. Um, and I had a couple dudes I was rapping with, and low-key, we were tired of rapping on, like, mixtape and Dilla beats and shit like that. Yeah. And so I was like, well, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I picked up music production. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. So your, what were some of the people that you were listening to at the time? that are going to get you into rap? Like, who were some of those artists? Growing up? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, shit. Wu-Tang, uh, Biggie, Tribe, um, De La, like, all that. Okay, Just, okay. It, it was mainly East Coast music, you know, um, growing up. I mean, you know, we listened to a lot of Bone Thugs and Harmony, too, and yeah, um, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, I mean, definitely went into the No Limit phase and... And did just, you? I, I we always I've asked for. Did you listen to a lot of Houston artists? Um, growing up, no. I found uh, more Houston artists later on. Uh, later on, like yeah. like high school. Okay, okay. But like growing up, I was listening to basically what my brother was putting me on. That was I, I think that was kind of the same thing with uh, I know that was the same thing with me where yeah. I was like, oh, it's the same I, thing. He's my brother. He put me on. Oh, yeah, man. no, I, I, <laughs> I used to have to. But sit, I, sit in the car and listen to Wu Tang. <laughs> I, I used to hate it, yeah. and then one day I just loved it. And after that, we came out of that. So yeah, I'm talking yeah. You, man, Wu Tang got. I mean, it was just nah, Wu -Tang when I first heard it, classic. it was weird. And then I was like, oh no, I like man. this. So I, I was mean, buying everything. Switching your kid brain from verse hook to. <laughs> There's just a bunch of noise <laughs> from listening to MC and, Hammer. And somebody's to, just gonna be yeah. doing this. <laughs> and then I, I, I even tell people how to listen to it. I was like, when you listen to Southern rap, you got to listen to more of the beat first. The lyrics come second. The hook is really prevalent. When you listen to older East Coast rap, it's all about the words. That beat is secondary. So the beat could be a fart and somebody Anything. going, uh, mm -hmm. and then yeah. <laughs> but listen to those words. Those words will be better now. 
Yeah. Every, now everybody, it's 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 yeah. all wide out there. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know it, where people all... come from now. Because sometimes I'll be like, oh, that dude's from Alabama. They're like, nah, he's from the Bronx. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like, what? Not even just that. You'll be, like, you'll be like, that dude's from Alabama. They'll be like, nah, he's from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what? what? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, so we we kind of did the same thing. We were listening heavy to like a lot of East Coast music. A lot of I noticed because you said Jay Dilla, yeah. And so it's yeah, kind of yeah. like uh, this yeah. was probably stuff that our friends would think was like weird. Oh yeah, we were listening oh, to, we like, listening to they're like what are you listening? Yeah. To? People was like JD, yeah. that's not Jermaine Dupri. Yeah. I was like, this is okay, fair enough. You know, yeah, I'm not gonna won't hold you yeah. and. Not gonna knock it, but yeah. that's not the real JD. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, JD, JD is that, but I get. No, yeah, that, sure. that's what it is. Yeah. But it's just like it's totally different styles of music. Yeah, and so it was like you know a lot of the East Coast stuff we listened to didn't lend itself to melodies. Like I wasn't going to RZA because I was like, oh yeah, I'm really. This is what we gonna put on at the dance. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's For how homage. you clear it out. But okay, so. You start to get into production, and who were who were you uh, rapping with at this time? Um, my man Dutch Richmond and Blunt and Mass. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, okay. These are still my big brothers. Yeah. They influenced me to uh to start doing music production. You see what I'm saying? They're they're they were a, a big part of my early on career of getting together dope shit. And early on in career, like you're you're essentially mainly doing the music production, right? Yeah, for the most part. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, I I rapped real early in my career, but I stopped because everybody I hung out with was a doper rapper than I was. So yeah. that's when I was like, I'm gonna hang my coat up. You see what I mean? I like, I ju- I'm just gonna stick to my beats. Mm-hmm. You're like, nah, yeah, nah, I'm not gonna do it. So then, what makes you decide to segue back into to rapping? No, I I I'm still not rapping. I mean, you do. Uh, th- th- There's some, th- yeah. You you've never said anything on a track lately. Come on now, N- not recently. <laughs> not recently. Not in, not the, in the past three years. No. Really? Besides something on self love that but, hasn't came out yet. Okay. I was assuming something was gonna come out on self love where you were doing something. Okay, I mean, so, I'm yeah. like I'm not really rapping on it. It's more of like a shout out track. But I guess you could. Some people are gonna be like, oh yeah, that's there's rapping, some rhyming there. No, most definitely. It, it's, yeah. So you're more into like curating everything for uh, like just music for other people to. Yeah, but I mean, be. basically, what I see it as is I'm I'm an artist, but I'm a producer. You see what uh-huh. I'm saying? So mm-hmm. like I'm I'm the one putting together these projects, making the music, and picking out the 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 people I want involved, as well as doing ideas and and curating the whole yeah project. Yeah. But it's under me because. You know, now I'm that the last, artist. your last project, like the Tony Dark experience, like let's let's just go through how you go about curating a project. Like one, uh, the Tony Dark experience, like what gives you the idea? Like you're like, okay, this is from the inception. This is how I want to start this out, and this is the artist that I want to get. Yeah, man, that was um that was something I just wanted to do for years, but I just never had. I guess um the right people around me the right artists like to to you know gather exactly what i wanted mm-hmm. okay but also okay. i wanted my growth in the project as well cuz i mean you know going back and i've been producing for a while but there's a time where it was like beat making and then really like producing yeah and, and yeah. like getting musicians involved and really trying to get the best product out yeah, absolutely. See you know what I mean? So, Tony Dark Experience, I think that was that. That was, to me, that's my first official project, even though I have so many beat tapes and EPs and, and stuff out before yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was really me as a producer. So, that's like your first, like, this is my first curated album. Like, yes, from start to exactly. Finish. All right. And what were you trying to get across by saying, like, the... It, I guess the Tony Dark experience. I mean, I just I wanted one to showcase the talent of my people. Okay. Um, the artists that I believe in. So I, you know, I, I really wanted to to get the artists involved and um, and but also show, like I said, show my my growth in a project and and show what what I can do uh, as a producer and as a, a creative director or whatever you want to call it. 
Absolutely. <laughs> so who are the people that you have, your artists, on the Tony Dark experience? On the Tony Dark experience? Oh, I don't want to forget anybody. Um, so <laughs> there's... Just paraphrase. It's a few, you know. Um, yeah, we're not saying everybody. Yeah, not saying everybody. Yeah, I said so everybody. Uh, my man Bryce Blanco was yeah. on uh, Revelations, which that was the single of the tape. Yeah. Um, I have Doe Man, uh, mm. my man Doe King man David, yeah. um, my homies from Jersey, Con and Dave Bishop. Uh, Con Sweetie and Dave Bishop. Um, I had Guilty Simpson on the joint. Guilty Simpson. I yeah, had yeah. Um, Sundown from Act Proof on it. Oh uh, yeah, it was it was uh, uh it was Live there's still projects. there's still people yeah. there um, yeah. that I'm missing. But yeah. It, so how was, do you how do you decide who you want to be on tracks? Because I guess the other thing when I was listening to it was I mean you're definitely a Houston artist, but it's like a branch. Like you yeah. you grabbed people from. At, from everywhere. Yeah, like, I mean, and that's just me being a fan of people and and, and trusting, you know, their quality of work. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's um, um, you know, that one Tony Dark experience was definitely more of um, emailing beats and trusting the artist on what I get back. You see okay. what I mean? <laughs> okay. Um, and and we did. I well, I say we, but we as a collective made a lot more songs than those you know and wow. um and i just uh picked my favorites ah okay and so there was okay. definitely songs that got cut that were great but just either didn't fit the vibe or just you know there was it was something i liked a little bit better so it got bumped yeah yeah, yeah. and and you know i went into that project telling everybody you know like this is how we're doing it we're um some some of y'all may get the same beats you know and it's okay. just i'm going to pick the best song out of it that's actually that's true production like your ear for putting together a project is pretty good when you're saying that you have more songs that didn't fit the vibe that's really important as far as arrangement when you're doing production as well of putting together the right vibes because some songs you might be like this is hot yeah. but this beat i made two years ago and it's just it doesn't fit this project Most definitely. and that's good to yeah to be smart like that to even see something like that is there anybody that you've listened to that you admire as far as their arrangement when it comes to alchemist hands yeah. down is the best arrangement yeah. of alchemist of makes. music right now he his make, tapes are yeah dumb. they flow really right. well yes yeah and mad lib too I could, yeah of um, course but that freddie gibbs man but alchemist is what you your what you asked yeah. alchemist is my answer i could like totally that, understand that man is a genius he is a genius yeah. i mean he doesn't get enough credit for what he did with uh period with mob deep because you think mob deep can do anything yeah. like that by themselves they they have video of him doing hold you down yeah with p and it's it's incredible like yeah. i'm like yeah, yo the fact it. that you started from kind of and this is just him kind of playing around mm -hmm. and putting stuff together yeah, he but was chopping up the sample it, it yeah, was dope though it was incredible it was yeah so yeah yeah he's definitely dope. a great arranger yeah what would you say because now we're uh getting into some of the uh newer projects so you have self-love yeah that, that's coming out by the time this comes out self-love should be out yeah. <laughs> so what is uh different about this project or, or or what's the uh the what are you trying to get across in self-love um to me this is more of a personal project to me okay um tony dark experience was something fun you know we it, it was more i don't want to say party tracks but you know it was yeah. it was just kind of like uh this is this yeah. is good music there was nothing um really it wasn't song to song relatable, should I say? Okay, okay. Um, self love is, is definitely a personal project. Uh, I think a lot of artists lose sight on um, trying to cons trying to keep their consumer happy and not themselves. Hmm. And um, and yeah, man, it's, it's just something that I've I've been working on self love and and growing as well. Um, so yeah, I wanted to kind of relate that in my music and and uh yeah and i guess uh i think that's why honestly that's why i thought you were going to be rapping because even the promos for it like tony dark experience seemed like it was the even the cover it's like it's a stage like the words are up it's the tony dark experience self-love like the promo for it really seems 
more centered and especially when we're talking about i mean just hearing the the phrase self-love it's like yeah um yeah i'm I'm working on things on me yeah things like that how are you going to get across uh a lot of some of those personal feelings and then you still have other people rapping on this one yes. right so when you're going now and looking at it what who are some of the artists that you're looking at and what are you trying to get them to express? so um yeah this this joint has it's an EP basically it's got um four artists on it okay um Mickey uh Mickey Woods Jr. is on the intro in a in a joint called Heavy Heart um I have Bryce Blanco on it as well I have my man Danny Watts and I have a homie out in Cali uh named Dope Cal okay okay so and and these are all as Tony Dark um experienced these are all artists that I handpicked and i wanted yeah. um that i believe that they could um tell tell their story or tell my story but through their eyes that's dope that's really so, dope and, yeah. and and this one not like tony dark experience we all sat in the studio uh, or or my you know my living room vibing creating yeah. and, and writing and and direction and, and stuff like that it was it was more definitely hands-on on my side as of the uh the the writing aspect and and the creativity which one do you prefer like the whole let's all sit in the room or or, or? i would definitely sit in the room with okay. the artists yeah okay that sounds good sounds good that's awesome i appreciate it no it is because <laughs> I, I i i've done music before so sitting in the room is i mean you get instant feedback. It's more cohesive that way. When you're emailing, people want to finish something and then they leave when you're emailing back and forth yeah. and then you're like, oh, I need this. Well, he's out. Yeah, yeah. So now I done. can't get him. But when you're yeah. there with each other and you're like, you got to say it like this. No, go in and say it. Enthusiasm. That's not it. It's enthusiasm. Say enthu en enthu enthu. Who said, who said mm. enthusiasm? No, I'm just saying like you just, <laughs> no, I'm laughing. Yeah. Like I, I have a story behind it, but it's neither <laughs> here nor there at the moment. But it's just like Thesiasm? that's one thing that you know. He was mad just, too. He was drunk. Oh, okay, okay. So that yeah, happens. That yeah, it happens. happens. Now it's like well, I don't do it anymore. But when in the in the later years, I would always I would be the guy that would control the party favors. Yeah, because yeah, I'm yeah. always be like, oh, okay, well, you've had too much partying. <laughs> we need to sit you down Focus. and chill. Yeah, because <laughs> you're gonna want you're gonna want to do this, but it's like, see, I, I don't have to worry about that yeah. with my artists because I am that guy. Oh, you're it's the, like, yeah, maybe Stony had too much. We'll okay, you're that guy. Oh, so <laughs> you're, you're so the, guy you're the one that goes too hard. Tony's. But the thing is, you you you've done your job, so it's like that's one thing I've seen as far as making like music when you make the beat. No, normally for me, I'd be by myself. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you'd come over, and I'd give you my ideas. Mm -hmm. All I gotta do is spread ideas. I can, I, yeah. I, I gotta spread ideas and tell you how to say it. Yep. I don't have to go in there and say mm. anything. No, you're right. So Absolutely. I can get drunk because I already know what I want. I know Makes what sense. I want. Makes sense. Now, what part of Houston are you from? So I'm, I'm really from like. Richmond, Sugarland area. Oh, okay. High okay. five. That's so where we're, we're, that's where we so cool. that's yeah. exactly where we're from. Who is, well, I'm from Houston. I'm from Sugarland. <laughs> All good, man. Nah, man. I'm, I'm, look, I'm yeah. from Houston, then we moved to San Antonio, then yeah. Alaska, and then Sugarland. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. But Sugarland's great. Yeah. I just Sugarland. claim it. There's no point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, I, yeah. I definitely, you know, I, I went to elementary to high school in Sugarland. Yeah, so, so did I. Yeah. And then, um, I guess being in Houston, how did Houston kind of shape uh, the way that you're coming up in music? Um, if it did at all, like, I mean, yeah. it definitely did. Because I mean, I went through a huge phase of Screw and Zero uh -huh. and Trey mm -hmm. and yeah. you know, like all of that. Even um, get your mind correct. Mm -hmm. Like Uncle that was Chaney that was my yeah, yeah that was my joint back in the day like, mm -hmm. um, but it, it it's just you know um, of it maybe like maybe more of my approach to music if that makes sense you know That's maybe not the that. sound but of 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 an approach because I definitely um I try to keep Houston essence in my music you okay. know um. 
I like to try to have at least some type of um like a bounce or a swing. Okay. Um okay. and and Houston music definitely, you know, always had that in it. Yeah. Um and then I I I even like to go in sometimes or a lot of the times samples I'm working with, I'll I'll screw them or you know, pitch them down, screw them down a little bit and um put like some hip hop drums over them and stuff like that. But okay. you know, it's just I don't know. I mean, may- <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so, like, this is just nerding out. So, like, what programs are you using specifically for your drums? What are you using? Uh, for the most part, Fruity Loops. Yeah. Yeah. Really? You yeah. get that sound out of Fruity Loops. <laughs> Everybody says that. Yep. Wow, that's I pretty am. good. Yeah, I appreciate so, it. Nah, I can't even <laughs> ask those questions. Not on camera because that's too much. Yeah, uh, yeah, to yeah, get yeah. that sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know it. it it's all about learning your program, man. Yeah. You know, you can get anything to sound away as long as you, you sit down and learn it. All right. Most yeah, definitely. it makes sense. I mean, I was using uh, Reason for a while. I but started then, like, on Reason. Yeah, I started on Fruity Loops and I went to Reason. Yeah. But then, like, Fruity Loops got Reason sounds better because Fruity Loops is more, it's it's easier to, to use, so much easier. Yeah, it's definitely friendly. Yeah, because Reason, sure. I mean, you got to... You gotta know what you're doing on Reason. Yeah, yeah. And I got yeah. some friends that are like, "It's gotta be Reason," because I went to school. For, I'm not Fruity Loops is click, click, click. Yeah. Like I love Fruity Loops. Yeah. Um, is that what you started on? No, I started on Reason. I'm sorry, you did say you started yeah, on yeah. Reason. And so what I, made you make the switch? Uh, a buddy. Yeah. And, you know, he was like, "Man, you should try this." You know, he gave me the hack version. Yeah, that's how we he, all got and, it. And you know, he was like, "Cause, cause I, I'm a visual person." Mm-hmm. And so he was like, man, I know, like, you could do this, this, and it will make sense for you. Mm -hmm. And, like, and, man, I literally, I did that, you know, that day, and I was like, man, yes. I mean, this makes a lot of sense. It makes so much sense. The editing, that piano roll, I could still guide people through it. If somebody called me right now, I could (laughs) tell you how to use just about everything over the phone, and I haven't seen it, like, in some days. Like, I just, I know it. It's like the greatest thing ever. So as far as playing guitar, and when you started doing that, that led you. How did you get to? How did you get to reason from from guitar? No, so um, I actually went to Media Tech in Austin. Okay. Um, so I graduated Media Tech. Um, yeah, they they we they put me on reason. Okay, oh, so that right. makes sense. It was it was the music production class. Yeah, and so that's kind of how I found my way in. So what made you even want to go to media tech? Because you went about to, this the right way. To gain more knowledge and skill. So you've always had this passion that you knew that you wanted to be yeah. a producer. Um, or you knew you wanted to do music. Something involved with yeah. music, yeah. That's awesome. So yeah, I went to media tech. I was living in Austin for some years. Um, did South by Southwest mm-hmm. as um, an audio engineer, live sound engineer for the first two years. And mm-hmm. then... And then I went and started doing like you know the beat battles and stuff like that, yeah. um, little showcases here and there. And mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of just how that's how I. I, I fell yeah, into reason. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I can understand that you found the reason, especially with audio engineering. How does your audio engineering shape your beats? Uh, man, honestly, I hate it. I hate audio engineering. You have really? so much more control. No, no, no. I mean, I do it. Yeah. It's just, and and especially with my production. But I guess like, when you put artists in it, I'm I'm out. Really? Yeah. It's too tedious for me. I would much rather have somebody that loves to do it and is better than it, than me at it. You know. I understand where you're coming from. So it, it's just all in the in the big picture. It's better for the record. It is better for the record. Cause I'm not gonna give the love it needs. You see what I mean? I understand. I got like, I got a buddy. I'm just being honest with myself. Yeah. You see what I mean? At least you're you're upfront with it. I think yeah, it's similar 100%. to like how J. Cole is. He has but, the, he has the knowledge, but he changed it up yeah, and yeah, let yeah. other people do it. But to and answer your question, I do I mix my beats hundred percent. I I yeah. Until I, I, until it goes to a project. You I've see seen I mean? that you do that. That's why I was like, Well Yeah. How do you hate it? Because you're pretty decent so at it. So tedious. I mean, not mixing beats, I guess, but songs, it's so tedious. Yeah. Like, mixing beats, I can mix a beat quick, but yeah. that's just because I'm so familiar with it again. Yeah, you know your sound. Yeah. You have the plug-in, you know your yeah, sound, you know the exact I, frequency. I've you done know it where so many times, drums. I can exactly. mix a beat in minutes, you know? But, yeah, the vocals, it is different. Finding that pitch for the person. Yeah, I don't, I don't want no yeah. wind. I don't want that. Go nah, on. I'm you got to lay it again, and I'm this good. time, 
stand right here. Yeah, no, I'm not recording. I'm not yeah. none of that. Nah. Well, hey, it is what it is, man. <laughs> I'm like, at least it's good that you have the know-how so that you you're when you're in the studio with somebody who is uh, mixing your vocals, you can guide them. Yeah. And that's what's positive. And, and, you know and if I'm there with an audio engineer, I'm already familiar with him or her. Yeah. And there's already a relationship. I already know the quality of their music or their work. You that's see what true. I mean? So, um, uh, yeah, I'm not setting myself up to fail. Um, it you makes know? sense. It's yeah. good to have that. Sort of like how we have Mike over here. Wah, yeah, wah, wah. shout out to Mike. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Mixmaster Mike. Yeah. Was that, was, that the, was that the horns? That was that was the horns. I did it. That was the horn. Okay. Wah, wah, okay. Wah. That was the horn. Yeah. I was just letting y'all have y'all's thing. Whenever producers get together and start talking about I knew it the second you started naming programs, I was like, all right, well, I'm like it's over. I've been waiting all <laughs> week. It was like <laughs> reason. I've been <laughs> waiting. Like, I've been yeah. waiting all week I to ask no. about them drums. Yeah. That was I was like, okay. <laughs> I've, I've been trying to involve. I I did get an NPC live recently, yeah. so I've been trying to involve that. Um, Why? But again, it's it's just also about learning something new. Just yeah. just growth, creativity. You know, because you've you've got it. <laughs> yeah, I yeah appreciate it. buddy, I appreciate you it. you've got it. I appreciate like, that. That's love. Incorporating the NPC. Yeah, I get it. I mean, you get a different swing sometimes, but they've put that. Yeah, no, nah, in the programs. Yeah, and I know that. Um, just like I said, just to work train my brain a little different you know yeah um it makes some, sense learning something new never hurt it, it doesn't like running things through channels you, you ever record on adat no nah. oh man i missed that no nah. didn't Blah blah blah. Anyway, I know. The, I, was, the, I, was gonna, I was gonna let y'all have y'all little producer moment. Face. Like yeah, y'all, y'all was literally like, I was like, y'all record on a six no, four. Because da, 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 da. I, I just like, wanted to okay. know. Okay. Because he okay. is yeah really good at what you do, and you could hear in his music. I just be like certain I like movements, it. but when producers get together and start <laughs> talking about the pitch and the tone, and they really y'all really get into it, we just saw hey, it. it, it that was real, five man. ten minutes real. of production. Just one talk. more thing about production. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It's not even. It. What alcohol do you drink when you're um, in the studio? Most of the time, beer. I'm a beer okay. beer guy. Um, uh, but I, you know, if I'm drinking liquor, it's Jameson probably. Oh, you are my brother. Oh, man. Yeah. So what beers? IPAs? I, man, you called it. Hopadillo. Uh, ho- yes, you're I mean, my new best a, friend. That's a go-to, bro. All right. So, nah, I shouldn't ask. What weed do you smoke? And, uh, any weed I can roll up. Because it sounds, when I when I, when I I hear, like, uh, the Tony Dark experience, yeah, it was influenced by beer. But as far as your next project, Wait, wait, wait! I'm sorry. You can tell the Tony Dark experience no, because is influenced by you beer. Can, you can hear like when you listen to a producer <laughs> and you've done production, you can hear people's movements and what they use. Like it's like Swiss beats. Like he moves like this. I see him. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can so his beats him. go, hey, 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 <laughs> boom, 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 boom. That's true. Boom, boom. So I'm like, oh, okay. So he's on probably vodka. He might be. Never mind. I could see him um, drinking a lot of vodka. What's his name? And the other thing. Uh, <laughs> um, Pharrell. He's all over the place a lot of times. But when he gets in his bag, and he works so often, nah. I don't, sometimes I think Pharrell be on enhancements, even though he says he's not. But I'm like, that dude is amazing. So it's like Pharrell's certain crazy. things that you hear. Uh, that's it. That's when you heard Snoop, you was like, he high. Like you just know. It's like you can hear the drugs. You can hear the alcohol. When I heard him, it's like you're partying a certain way. You're like, oh, okay, you're drinking beer. All right, it's just, a, it's, it's just the no. Like we talked about off the camera. Anyway, I gotta shut up because I'm loquacious. No, 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 no. That's fine. Loquacious yeah. was a great word too. <laughs> uh, so beer fuel <laughs> self love, or is that just just love? By me. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I mean you know I think it all you know all comes together. Yeah. There's, there was definitely some beer intake during self love, yeah. but okay. you know there's definitely some marijuana intake probably too. I'm sure so. there was more of that. Okay, so, you know okay. it's just you know. Just I'm just glad to be back. I zoned out when y'all said Fruity Loop, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, I knew what was about to happen. I was like, all right, we're gonna. I was just, I had nothing. I was literally gonna be like, you know, uh, Madlib 
made his beats on an iPad. That's all I had. I think he's trolling though. That's but, all he you had. Know. You think you think he's <laughs> I think, trolling? I think he's trolling. I don't think he's trolling. I keep listening, that, and you know, you may I, not. But I think he is too. I don't think he's trolling. I think that I don't think he made all of those beats on the iPad. Definitely over time. I think he's made like you've started like like on like Ableton, right? You can start them on the phone. Some dudes be like, "I made the beats on the." F- I know. I'm sorry. Uh, I no, know, no, 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 Ableton. I, know. I got you. Yeah. I thought that was alcohol. Go you ahead, made, continue. you made, you made, you, <laughs> made, you made the beats. You made the beats on the phone, but then you can get you can transfer it to that, the program. Isn't that the cheat? It's kind of like I'm with. I, I was thinking the same thing where I was like, okay, yeah, you might have done these on the iPad to start. But you did you run him through something else? It's like if I was like he was sampling. You'll see people that have videos on Instagram, whether it be Instagram girl or a guy, whatever. They'd be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, man, I shot that with my iPhone." And I'm like, "But we see the edit." Yeah, you edited like, it. But you, yeah, you, you put all the flavor of it yeah. in an iMac in a program, and then you popped it back over to the phone, and then you uploaded it. But, That's cool. There's nothing against it. It's all the. It's all. It doesn't take away from you as a craftsman because it's like, uh, like, like David. Because you're using your tools right. Yeah. yeah. David, uh, we got that excellent photographer. That man could take a picture probably with a disposable camera. He can. I could take a picture with a high end camera. It's going to look like trash. It's not going to look yeah. as like good it as don't, Odie Wams. It doesn't. No, you're right. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. So I'm like, it really takes the, and the craft is the practice. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. people that have been doing it over and over again. When you guys got into your engineering discussion, all I kept thinking about was like when we do video editing, like when we like we're recording other stuff and we're editing and it's every time I'm like, oh, this is great. You know, the edit is where you're creating it and everything. Mm-hmm. But I'm always like, man, really wish I could afford to pay somebody to do yeah. this because it's so Honestly, tedious. Honestly, yeah. it is yeah. tedious, but like the little bit of editing I do, it came natural to me because of that. I liked it. I like editing because it's just. So you it, like mixing, it, though? It's, it's yeah, because you give me sure. when you gave me that whole block of the cookie lady, I was like, watch it through, piece it all together. Ashley Rivera, yeah. unfortunate cookie. Uh, yeah, I know, <laughs> so but low, the, we low key we do lady. call her the, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm just saying like. It's. I was like, that's why it came natural to me. And you was like, oh, you're done? I was like, I finished in two days. I just went back and I looked at everything. And then when I realized we didn't have everything we needed, that's when I stopped. But I'm like, went like it doesn't take long. Like I mean, from after work, I was just like, oh, this is the whole project how I want it. And it's just like, it's just like music. It's like you see everything and you go, I know what we did. So now I got to go in and piece these, these things together. That's blah blah blah. I don't like pieces. Do you like making puzzles? Do you like solving puzzles? Yeah, that's. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like solving puzzles? No. See, that's the thing. I when don't. people like you, look at the picture on the box, and then you see all the pieces, and you're like, like you I'm know good. what? I already know what this Y'all is gonna look that. like. So I, I have fun. That's that's all I got. Okay, <laughs> I can be funny, and I can edit stuff. I have nothing no. else. So no. I mean, you know, it. you gotta appreciate it. You know. That's my. Yeah, it's respectable. Thing. That's what I do. <laughs> That's all it is. All right. How was it? Uh, doing uh the live engineering in Austin. Um, sound. Uh, that's I love that actually. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. It, it you know live sound though is so on the fly and it's you don't have to get everything like <laughs> perfect like yeah. as audio engineering. Ah, you see what okay. I mean? Okay. He. I mean, he thought you did. You did that stuff for church, though. Yeah, so. but I mean, I wasn't amazing at like my. You got to be my buddy Roy. He he went to HCC for this. Like he runs sound at uh. He used to run it at Fitzgerald's, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, and he's a he's a he's Caucasian and Mexican, so he's like so even though I could pass letter. through, I'm not gonna. Yeah. It's disrespectful. Yeah. So then he used to do it at like a few other places. Oh, he still does it at uh, one of these hotels around here. I'm not going to name names, but I'm like, he's he's really out there. Yeah. I'm like, y'all would enjoy, all three of us would enjoy an IPA. Yeah. 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 And discussing music programs. Probably not. 
Oh yeah, <laughs> I feel like y'all. It was wait. like five good. You you do that in like in the first five minutes. You go, oh respect. Anyway, uh, how okay. about these other things that you're okay. into? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Because it's not. I feel you tell on us that yeah. Okay, so I could just copy that conversation that y'all just had, and I could break into like you know production conversations. Sometimes. Yeah. Oh my like, hey, hey. reason. <laughs> Me too. That's it. It'd be beer. like with a MIDI keyboard. <laughs> It's so basic. That's my <laughs> what it all is. I said, Do you have I a mini it. core? All, all I care about is the finished product. All the stuff that's going into it, I'm like, I appreciate the work. Like I said, I'm like, I know Madeline be doing stuff. I know you be doing stuff. I know y'all be doing I'm like, I know it. But I'm just looking for the very Falcon. end. Yeah. I mean, and, that, and that's cool, too. That's cool. It's just understanding the product. You go, oh, I, totally, I totally understand why Dr. Dre is Dr. Dre. That's when you really go, oh, well, he makes the same beat. Yeah, but the way that it sounds. When, when the game goes, Dr. Dre on this, this next album, and he goes, Dr. Dre mixed three of my records. You'll know what records. I mean, at the risk of sounding like Pusha T, if you know, you know. So it's like when you hear it, you go, oh, my God, that's what that means. That low end, it's just like. Blah blah blah. Well, you don't want to get too deep into that because too late. We were already there. Yeah, all production, all uh, production yeah. conversations. So you were in Austin. <laughs> <laughs> back to Tony Dark. We're coming back to the music scene in uh, Houston. What what keeps you in Houston? Um, and I'm not mm-hmm. trying to say that like yo Houston needs to be left. No, I just always like to ask Houston. I, I love Houston. Yeah. Um, family, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, age, mm-hmm. uh, friends. I mean, it's it's bigger than Houston to me. Okay. You know, I got loved ones here. That's what keeps me here. That's right. And what made you decide? At, at what point are you like, all right, I'm. Well, you've been doing this for a minute, like. From the beginning, you've pretty much been like, yo, I'm going to sustain myself with music. Like, this is going to be a job. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely had um, jobs in between mm-hmm. here and then, you know. But, um, but yeah, man, I, I just really believe in myself and I believe in my music. Um, and I want to put my craft, you know, a- as high up there as I can. Right now, I'm a stay-at-home dad, you know. So, um, shout out to my little man. But, uh-huh. uh yeah, man. How old's your kid? Uh, he'll be, he'll be two in three days. That's awesome. Oh, three days. Three, three days. days. Big plans. Um, we we probably gonna take him to New Orleans. My girl's oh, got to work, yeah. so um, yeah, we taking a little trip. That's good. That's six hour drive. Well, four hours if you're him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's It'll good. probably be about five with us. Yeah. <laughs> that's all it takes. You just, gotta, man. you just gotta press on the gas. Four hours. No, I believe it. I've, I, you know, I've it's probably done it truck. too, but it wasn't four hours and two minutes. It was like flat. Three, <laughs> it was like three hours and forty five. I was like, God, hey man, you just gotta press it. You gotta no, go yeah. it the whole no, way in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. New Orleans is, you know, one. It's a great city. Um, my chick is a a DM for um Abercrombie and Fitch. So yeah. and sh- that, that's one of her um regions, I guess. Yeah, you yeah, would yeah. call it. Um, but yeah, so we go out there actually a lot. Sweetie boy, that's the nickname of my son. Uh, so he he goes out there a lot. Oh, okay, it's such okay. a country <laughs> yes. name, that sweetie is boy. Dope. <laughs> such he's a probably gonna hate it when he's older, but oh well. You know, <laughs> or or he'll embrace it. He'll fully. embrace it. Nah, he'll yeah. embrace the name fully. You know, he'll embrace it because it'll definitely. be like sweetie boy, but he'll be yoked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll be like, sweetie boy over there. Who's oh yeah, what's going That's on? Like, oh, oh, shit. That's like when you find out Suge Knight's name was Sugar Bear. Yeah. And people exactly. were like, oh, it's Sugar Bear. I'm like, nobody it's called him. Like everybody called him Sugar Bear. I was like, I was like really? Yes. Mm, or his first name me. is Suge. Marion. <laughs> like, <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, I'm about to do 800 push-ups right now. Yeah. <laughs> Stand. <laughs> yeah. Now, how how did having a kid? Effect because your kids too. Yeah. Uh, the Tony Dark experience came out two years ago. About yeah. two years ago. It wow. was two years and ago. So okay. So what was this? How much is having a kid influencing your music? It's. I mean, he's a huge influence. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, he he's part of why I've been dealing with um self doubt and you know trying to trying to embrace me more you see what i mean um 
And that's why self love is what it is. It's really um kind of just uh what's the word I want to use? Accept it, not accepting the growth, but like appreciating the growth. Mm -hmm. Um You're saying self self doubt. What was some of the uh I guess what was the doubt that you had? I mean, there's always going to be self-doubt if you're an artist. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I think a lot of artists put consumers' expectations before theirs. Mm. You see what okay. I mean? Um, so when I say self-doubt, it's just um, knowing that I can do it. Okay. Because there's a, definitely a fear like, okay, are people – there's got to be this balance between are people going to like this and am I going to like this? There are definitely artists I've seen that have progressed during the years where I'm like, I feel like you don't even like your own music. Mm -hmm. Like you're literally yeah. just making music because you're like, my fans like that song, so I'm make 800 of them. <laughs> yeah, and see, and see I, <laughs> like, me, as a, me as a producer, as an artist, I would much rather have a thousand niche fans than a million fans off of one song that, I may not ever make again. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll be telling. I tell people you so, got to be. I, if if I had musical talent, like if I stuck with the piano, I'm about to say he does have musical but talent. I'm just saying you like there are artists that are like like one of my favorite artists is Currency, just because he's. I like the not only do I like the music, but I like the appeal of. I am going to consistently put out whatever it is that I want to put out. Yeah, all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna live my life how I want to. Yep. Like, you know, uh, he, currency can easily get to France. He got the money. He might show up, and people don't know him. But I'm like, that's nah, great. And people paying currency to go to people, France, and that's what I mean. It's like one of those things <laughs> where I'm like, in a bag in France. People know him, but it's not. It's a different level. It's like. He looks like he has that comfortable fame. No, nah, most definitely. Like, yeah, yeah I, and see, I, like, I would say that with Alchemist. I would say that with a lot of these guys oh, right yeah, now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Freddie saying? Gibbs, the yeah, game. That, that know like, their lane, that, that just stick to it because they're familiar with it and they know their fans fuck with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because it's one of those things where it's like, I, and, and, and I feel like when you're that consistent, Eventually, it kind of like I feel like we're seeing that happen now with uh, Freddie Gibbs, where Freddie Gibbs puts out something, and you know if you're a Freddie Gibbs fan, you're getting it. Like yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a download it. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna support it. Yeah. I got you. I don't care what videos come out. And then everyone, we were like when we were talking about the WWE earlier, you'll start to see a new person. Hey, have you heard of um Fre Freddie Gibbs? Yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah, I heard of Freddie Gibbs. Yeah. Where'd you hear Freddie Gibbs? Yeah. Oh, he was on a Spotify playlist. And that, so it's like it gradually starts to branch out. I guess the thing about it is people don't see that years of work behind where it's like, yo, Freddie yeah, Gibbs has been doing this forever. But see, I, I I mean, you know, those new fans are needed. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I don't want to take anything away from anybody that finds something too late. You see what I mean? That's what we were talking about before yeah, we, we were got talking here. About that. We, we, yeah. it, it's, it's great to have that core, but it's always great to see. To grow. And I, and I like when Freddie says, like, yo, I like, I like the new. I like new people coming in. Yeah, you know, like, most definitely. <laughs> I need money. I like yeah, the money. Yeah. Yeah. Got that's the, funny. Like, that's just what it is. But it, it's. It's great when they do it, and it's not a, it's not a pandering. Like it's like I'm gonna be here regardless. Like you'll have these ups and downs and ebb and flows. Like all of a sudden, everybody will be on the wave, and then if it starts to die down, it's cool because you still got your core fan yeah. base. Yeah. It's like yo, Most similar to what you do, like self love. Ever. Yeah, I mean it's coming out. I know you're not over there going, what do the people mean? Yeah. Yeah. With the title of something called Self Love. It was definitely, like I said, it's a personal album. It's what I needed at the time, you know, and I know it will help other people grow and other people, it's going to be relatable. Yeah. Um, But it's it's definitely what I wanted to do. You That's know? positive. Hmm. Yeah. So your music, uh, is your music, especially right now and this part of your career, is it very therapeutic to yourself? Yeah, it's an outlet. Yeah. Most definitely. Um, it. There's a lot of times being a stay-at-home dad where mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of alone time. I understand. <laughs> um, so, yeah, music is, I mean, music has been everything for me for a while, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, 
Why, wait, my wait. music is is very important right now. You said music's been everything to you for a while. What do you mean specifically? As of um, as a coping with you know, I mean, I, I believe if you're an artist or if you're a create creator of yeah. some type, you don't have to be an artist, um, a musical artist that is. <laughs> but um, you know, y- you have stuff that you. R- run away to or run to when you know and there's definitely songs that that i put on when i'm sad or happy Mm -hmm. or or want to you know get over a situation there's definitely songs that i go to you know Mm -hmm. and um yeah right now that has been my music for me so in the creation of this project who have you been listening to um man for the most part let me be honest um I listen to a lot of uh, Anderson Park. Oh, yeah. I listen to a lot of uh, Code of the Friend. Um, super dope cat. He's. I just started following him on uh, YouTube. He has like not that many people on YouTube, but I just started like. Yeah, you know, he's crazy yeah. creative. That guy yeah. is. He'll actually be here um, <laughs> August twentieth, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure where, but I'm definitely hitting that. It's. He's crazy. I would oh, okay. definitely. I think it's his, at warehouse. I don't believe so. I think or it's at. at uh, um, don't let me lie to you. I don't the, know. Not the pavilion. No, because I saw it because it obviously yeah. it pops up when you look at it, and it's yeah, like yeah. Houston. And um, but anyways, like his new album, it's Photo F O T O, and and that is it's been a crazy inspiring album to me. Yeah. Like I've honestly played that since it came out. That's awesome. Like, now so I'm gonna go shout back out and to listen. him because he's yeah. he's crazy dope. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, your kid's only two. Yep. Does he listen to any music? Yeah, he's crazy, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> he, <loves his> <laughs> yeah, he thinks he's making the beat when I'm making a beat. Really? That's yeah, awesome. he's wilding. Oh, okay. yeah. He is really wilding. Oh, okay, okay. That's, That's awesome. always interesting to see because I feel like kids when they're younger super like it, and then at a certain point they don't realize how who was that we ran into? Like we ran to Cal Wayne mm-hmm. or something, and his son was there, and I was like, "How's your kid feel about?" It? He goes, "He." really be like how do you make money doing this yeah like he's like on a nintendo <laughs> switch like, yeah, like yeah. i don't care about none of that <laughs> yeah, yeah. but i'm like because i'm like a kid's still gonna be a kid we talked to definitely. uh galette galette's like you know like his son's like yeah i just you know like we want to be a rapper he's like no no <laughs> i mean like, that's cool okay. though you know that's no, great I always think yeah, it's he funny. made it the face so. I, you <laughs> know, we probably have too many rappers in our society as it is right now uh, you know yeah because everybody, everybody, everybody <laughs> no do we it. don't everybody just keep coming <laughs> oh my gosh there's so Here. many there's so, no. so many I know. there's a lot of rappers man <laughs> yeah. um but nah you know i hope sweetie boy does music but really? um your dad, how is he? How, like when you were like, okay, I want to do music. How do you feel? He was hype. He, he was, was super supportive. Hyped. Yeah. Okay, okay. So he was my biggest supporter. Yeah, of course. So it makes sense why you want your son to go into music. Yeah. What genre? Mm-hmm. Whatever he loves. That's awesome. Because you mean, started out hip hop, preferably, yeah. but no, yeah, I'm about to say, but you, he could start in hip hop and then be like, I want to do this house, and I want to be like, yeah. I want to be like, yeah. God damn it, turn that shit See? off, and then you'll be the you'll be the old guy then. That's yeah, what it is. Or definitely. he could incorporate rock and hip hop and be like Yellow Wolf. That's like, a, that's yeah. what it is. I hope not. What you, what you <laughs> <laughs> said? I hope not. Let's Sorry. gloss over that yeah. one. Sorry. Everybody hates I'm Yellow Wolf. A wolf. Yeah. I'm just wolf. not a Yellow Wolf fan. I, you know what? And it's not even. I'm a, the only Yellow Wolf fan. Here. You are the only uh, Yellow Wolf, yeah. and it's not a matter I defend of him. I listen to Yellow. I've yeah. listened to him. It's at a point now. I told you, there's a lot of rappers where I'm like, I know that you can rap. Like I believe it. I've heard it. I know you can. I just don't always want to hear the song. No, and that, like, there's, there's nothing getting that's around. That's cool, it. in my opinion. Like said, One thing that we talked rap. about, we said there's a lot of rappers. And it's to the point now where I go, it's not, it's not amazing to be able to rap anymore. Like before, it, just a few years ago, I mean, it was like, okay, there's rappers. All right, black people rap. And then, oh, look, there's an Asian girl that raps. Oh, look, there's a white guy that raps. Oh, look, that's interesting. Now people come up to me. There's an Indian guy that I'll be like, get that out of my face. You can rap. We get it. Everyone has the ability to rap on a certain level that we're, we're – Everybody, no offense to him, everybody is is at least a little Wayne now. Let's get better. Like, that's the way I feel. People okay, heard every, Wayne. Every, everybody's not. 
Most definitely, At least everybody's Lil not Little Wayne. Not, not but Little Wayne, I, I but I see what, what you're, you're saying. Say. I yeah. see what you're saying. But I do think that people are more into. I find myself more into projects now. Mm-hmm. So when you As, talk yes. about like the stuff that That's you do, thing. I think uh, <laughs> you know the 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 response that uh, Freddie Gibbs and Madlib got on this last project. Like people really like it when it's like, oh yeah, you sat down and really worked on this. I'm. When Kanye and Pusha T did their thing, I felt like that was a complete project with them. Mm-hmm. All that other stuff, Kanye, I, I Hold wasn't on, necessarily. Wait. Kid Sea Ghost. I did like Kid Sea Ghost. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 but I'm well just saying together. there were there are still other things where I'm just like, eh, you, okay. you know. Like, I like Tiana Taylor. That, that but even me. she was upset yeah. about it. I don't know how I feel about that. I understand. I, <laughs> people like it when you're putting together a complete project as opposed to. Hey, somebody emailed me, or not even emailed me. Somebody, I found a beat online. Online, I rapped on it. It happened. This, I like, I like the this project. This my single. Check it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is my new single. Yeah. Check it out. It's here. It's that. And I do like more of a project. Even the Revenge of the Dreamers project. That movie. That is the behind best. it. It's album. I'll say this again. I know it's before. The best I, album? I've know before. I've said this before, and I was like, "Yo, this dude could rap his ass off." And I was talking about who was I saying? Um, Kendrick Lamar is like the best, right? After hearing this one, you're yo, trying to he, give it to J Cole. Yeah, I'm giving it to Jay. Hey, I'm not a J Cole J. fan. J Cole, J Cole can definitely. J rap. Cole killed it. I just like the fact that. It's even when you watch the little documentary, they're all sitting, they're they're creating stuff, they're putting yes, things the together, best. and it's just it, it comes together. Like I said, Maxo was rapping on that thing. Yeah, like everybody kind of comes together and it's just like, yo, we're gonna we're gonna pick the best, kind of like what you're talking about for the Tony Dark. Like we're gonna pick the best, and you know, yeah, that's it. Was anybody upset if they didn't make the album? For experience. Nah, you sure. They're like maybe. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody's feelings like, well, probably hurt. They didn't tell me though. Oh, okay, okay. You seem like such a laid back guy. Yeah, I mean, I am hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. It's like I mean, it reflects. Like, how did you get to be this laid back? I don't know, man. IPAs, IPAs, and they don't like and Buddha. And you know, a kid will calm people down too. That's true. Kids usually, you know. I mean, yeah, but I, I'm pretty chill. You know, yeah. I, I'm a chill guy. I don't, you know, I, I don't let too much ruffle me up. I understand. I try to mind my business. It's like you're from California, but you're blatantly Mm-mm. from like I'm, Richmond. Yeah, I'm yeah. Definitely, <laughs> definitely was born yeah. and raised in Texas. Yeah. Now, what are the plans for? Or, or do we have anything sketched out for? After self love drops, or is just the focus now? Self love. Um, you mean album or project wise? Albums, or? project wise, things you got going on. In um, no, nah, just ideas. I've been okay. creating. Um, definitely been creating a lot more since these mix and masters got to me. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Um, but yeah, right now the the definitely the main focus is self love. Um, we're doing a uh, album release party slash. My birthday party at Grande Lucille's. Shout okay. out to Reese and Black and Eve's. Oh, and that's them. right with the what, Waxaholics and everything. Shout out to the Waxaholics, hundred yeah. percent. Um, but yeah, so we're doing that. Um, got some other stuff lined up, but you know, I don't, I don't, don't know if I'm, yeah, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, yeah, I, don't, yeah I, don't, I don't know if I want to say anything <laughs> about it, but yeah. you know, we we definitely got some ideas and and um, it's 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 gonna be a good look, man. I'm I'm excited about it. And it's always better to hit people with a surprise. Like, don't tell people. I'm still waiting for. Can't, can't show your cards. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, because I'm. I know what you're gonna say. No, you remember when Nas used to say, like, it, in the '90s, every video used to be like to be continued and never they got never continued. continued it. Never continued. What it. happened to Nas? And it was street dreams. What happened to street dreams? Nah, yeah. He was like, "Yo, something's blowing up." They're like to be continued. It's like, ah, you know, I had an idea, but then didn't whatever. have the budget. <laughs> whatever budget. <Detox. laughs> Detox itself. He gave, never had. He, he gave you detox. He didn't. That wasn't detox. That was detox. That was. That was. Detox. He was like, "Look, y'all gonna. This take, is what y'all gonna get. Y'all for gonna detox. take this album. I'm tired of hearing it. That was See, Compton. He goes, he goes, "Look, I somebody pulled up to my house with a dump truck full of money, off of these beats. I'm not doing. 
Dr. Dre, same thing like people looking for Rihanna. Like, yo, I'm waiting for this Rihanna app. Rihanna is shoveling makeup into everybody's house. Yes. Facts. Maybe an album comes out. Maybe I'm fine with it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. Once you make like, a certain like, level of money, I'm just I'm not even looking for you to make music, but it's good when you do. So when I hear like I'm not a big Beyonce fan, but she's amazing. But when I hear like even Jay Z, when he put out four forty four, I was like, yo, I'm a huge Jay Z fan. And I was like, This is my favorite Jay Z album. It's better than Reasonable Doubt. And people are like, What? I'm like, give it some time. Like you gotta yeah, look you at can where al- you, you can always come yeah. back. You gotta look at where you at in life, but blah blah blah. Yeah. Regardless, I'll, you can always come back. I don't know, man. You don't think wait. so? Nah, I don't. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I'm sorry. <laughs> there are some artists that I think can definitely. I feel like you're thinking about somebody in particular. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. I was just <laughs> yeah. She's saying reasonable doubt his. is not yeah, better than four four four. That's what you're saying. Oh no, no, no. I agree. Look, we, we go back and forth. Yeah. We go back and forth on this I'm, uh, all the time. Yeah. I respect I feel, it, yeah. but it's just I feel not, like four 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 is for lack of I feel like four 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 is some it's a watered down reasonable doubt. And there's nothing wrong with that. Fair I enough. feel like Jay Z is hitting things that he's hit multiple times he has. in his career. It's just like it's more it cohesive. Was, well, I also thought it was a reminder for hey, hey, you guys that didn't it's, listen to my reasonable doubt. Here I, you I go. Check like this it, out. It's more cohesive, kind of like J Cole. J Cole in the beginning was trying to put the candy. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, put the candy Cole's with the with the yeah. He was trying to put to them Jay-Z. together, and then it was like 2014 Forest Hill Drive when it, it all came together to where it was like it just wasn't as preachy because before I said I used to tell him I don't listen to J. Cole because it sounded like a montage of like me doing hard work like every time I hear his music I would always like like it's a montage of me getting better and I'm like I don't want to hear this like, is not where I'm at. Yeah. You're Cole too preachy. Comes on in like an 80s movie right before you're about to like build a house. Yeah. <laughs> you get to the end you're like, yeah. I'm studying and I'm Jeez. like figuring it out. <laughs> and then like 2014 get- Forest Hill Drive, it got, I was like, oh, you got it. And then everything else that came after that. And then this album, I was like, oh, you got it. And even seeing him make it, like it was like the sound that he went. I was like, oh, you got it. You don't need the top. You don't need nobody. All you need is these people around you, these young, hungry guys to make the new thing. And I was like, yo, you figured it out. Like, you're not over here. Like, you're not you're not being a jerk about saying, like, uh, meditate, don't medicate. You're not being a jerk about it because I'm going to medicate. I'm not going to meditate. But, you know. You know, I, th- yeah. I think there's a, you know. You should listen to Jay. Everything there's in, a balance. Yeah, yeah. Every, everything balance. In, in. There is a balance. In little amounts is good. Yeah, exactly. you know, you can You can meditate and medicate. That's yeah. true. So, you know, it's, it's all about your lifestyle. Plus, he was Get talking to live. a particular group of people that did not have balance. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that's what yeah, I felt yeah, like. There you go. I felt like a lot of people are commenting. I'm like, I don't think J. Cole is talking to the adults. Like, nah, I think I said, talking, this yeah, is not nah. geared to it. I'm like, you have a and job, you, sir. You saw what happened You're to fine. The, the people he was talking to. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. It's like, yeah, where is Pump? down. Exactly. Like, yeah. Where is, yeah. Exactly. We saw what happened to Takashi, but, you know, it is what it Don't is. Don't get ahead of yourself. Don't yeah. get ahead of yourself. But uh, speaking of that, I mean, we've had an awesome time with you, man. Oh, man, I appreciate I really want to thank you out. for coming out, like, for real. And all the people that are listening, you have a very luxurious beard. Oh. Very luxurious. Check it out. Best, best. Best beard on the show today. That was, that was an awesome, <laughs> awesome Rick Ross. Awesome. <laughs> oh, oh. I love it. I love it. But once again, we're here with, in my humble opinion, where the opinions are humbled and no information is jumbled. And we'll see you later. Finger guns. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Bang. <laughs>